high. If you have samples, for example, that you will need to embed in plastic, like these paper substrates, and you want to embed them in plastic so they become like this, you need to, gr to grind and polish the surface before it can examine. Today I'm going to show you how to make that, and how to create this mirror-like surface. We use grinding machine, sandpaper, and polishing paste to achieve that. Here in the picture you can see two pieces that's been cut in two. On top of the paper, a silver non-ink pattern has been printed. What we want to do is study the cross-section of this print. So here you can see the sample after it's been embedding in plastic. You can see a small metallic spring with several pieces of paper. The spring is used to, to make the paper stand upright during embedding. So here you see a machine that is used for grinding the samples. The machine you see consists of sandpapers of different types. And on top of it it's a rotating device that you can mount your sample in. For important samples I prefer to do it manually. And this time we're going to do that. We start by grinding off the back side of the sample to make it flat and even. This is used in later stages when we're going to mount it on the SEM sample holder. Then we turn over the sample and grind it from the front side. We use a coarse paper in the beginning so we can come down to the right dimension and the important sections that we want to study. This time it was a little bit of excess of plastic before we can reach the interesting section of the cross cut. But the video has been shortened down so you don't need to wait so long. This looks nice. We now have reached the region of interest in the plastic. Now we're going to switch to a different grade of paper. We started with paper of grade 300. Now we continue with 500, then followed by 1200, and finally 4000. Add some water, then start grinding this sample back and forth in a linear direction. Not round in circles. This is because when we switch paper we're going to change this direction. And this is useful because we can then see which grinding lines in the substrate was caused by which grade of the paper. Now we reach the last stage of paper 4000. The key point here is to use the right paper to do the right job. If you have lots of things to grind off then you need to have a more coarse paper. You can never use a paper with, with a high grade to achieve lots of grinding. That is u useless. It will take infinite amount of time. Okay, here I am with this piece that we grinded down now. Let's look in this microscope to see how it looks like. So here you see a low magnification image of the sample after it's been grinded with the 500 grade paper. You see also that the grinding marks goes from left to right, horizontally. The next image shows how the lines goes when we reach grade 1200. Here the lines are vertically. If you look at the surface with your eyes it will look rather dull. Here at grade 4000 the lines are barely visible. You can also see that they are diagonally aligned. Okay, now when we have finished all the papers on this material, we're going to switch to polishing with diamond paste instead, down to one micrometer in size. That means we will pass three different pastes. When you polish with diamond paste, you need to have a soft cloth or a paper beneath the sample. Here I used just an ordinary filter paper. That usually works very well. After that you have applied the diamond paste on the paper, you start rubbing your sample back and forth. Now you see that the dull surface has become much more glossy and transparent. The spring you see inside the plastic is now clearly seen. This stage you achieve when you reach the 3 micrometer diamond paste. We have now come to the final stage where we're going to do the one micrometer polishing. That's when it becomes mirror-like. And to see the effect of that we need a better microscope. So here I use a more advanced microscope to see the details of it. At the last stage when I polish with the one micrometer diamond paste, I usually just only use my rubber gloves and, and rub them back and forth across the sample.
Here you can see the microscope images again. This is the 6 micrometer grade. And here comes the 3 micrometer grade and it follows by the final 1 micrometer grade. And you, if you look in the center of the image you can see the piece that we are interested in. That piece is the printed silver ink, here visible in a cross section. If we go back to the first image we can see that this little section corresponds to the cross section of the printed ink. Here you have the same cross section of the paper at higher magnification. Now, now the printed ink is clearly visible. The last image shows it at the highest magnification of the microscope. This is the end of light microscopy. Now the sample will continue into the scanning electron microscope.